This is our Forex blog for March 30th, 2012, and I'm very happy to release or discuss in the video for the first time uh, a new tool that shows the daily, weekly, and monthly trend. The benefit of this over our last one is if you put it on your charts, it will show you what it looked like historically and, of course, live as well. They're called Pivot Score Daily, Weekly, and Monthly. And just to give you an idea, the daily trend here, here's the old one that we have always used, and it's accurate when you let it run live, but if you bring it up after the fact, uh, there's no way to uh, show it correctly on past bars. So as you can see, I just added it to uh, the yen here, and it takes the current score, and it pretty much uh, covers that throughout the day in the past. It doesn't let you uh, see what it would have looked like at the time, whereas our new tools do. So let me remove that from the chart, and then we will uh, start our uh, class today. The new ones are called Pivot Score Daily, Weekly, and Monthly. And I'm also going to be coming up with an intraday one as well, uh, because these are based on the pivots and show how strong or weak each currency is. And over the last two weeks, we've got it to work historically when you bring it up on a chart. It also works historically and accurately on a range chart, too. So now you can look at each currency and statistically compare each one to every other uh, every other currency on multiple time frames. The histogram on the top uses five of our best statistical tools. Three of them measure direction and two of them measure the intensity of the direction. And underneath that we have the daily, weekly, monthly trend. So the dollar is weak, the daily trend and weekly trend. I don't really care too much about the monthly trend. I mostly care about the daily. Is the real time trend down and is the daily trend down? And I'm going to trade that to the downside. If the weekly trend's down as well, I'm even more apt to trade it. You can see the yen very strong, the dollar weak, uh, starting the day off. The Australian didn't really have, uh, had a little bit of weakness here. The uh, daily trend was pretty much mixed without much uh, momentum up or down. So it could obviously, uh, it's probably more likely to go down because the weekly and monthly trend is so weak. Also the CAD here, you can see extremely weak. So you'd want to start the day off by selling the CAD against either the pound, which is strong on all time frames for the most part, or the yen. So let's look at the CAD yen starting the day off. We're looking to sell this. You can see the same exact tool here on this chart too, which I just brought up maybe 30 minutes ago. It fills in the back history. And coming up to midnight, this one's above the hourly here. It did make a huge drop down, pulled back up. Notice on this move up here, this thing stayed in a downtrend. It had very little uh, weakness, but the weakness was there nonetheless. It never went green on the way up uh, because the hourly moving average is not a component of this tool, which it, it is in our uh, previous uh, daily trend tool. So here's your trades you would have taken in this. When it comes down to the hourly here and finds support and breaks down, you go short. You wouldn't have made much on the first trade, maybe short here at 40. Out when the trailing stop got hit, a few pips. Comes back up again, can't get back above the hourly. You can see the weakness on the down thrust was more than the one on the way up. I would prefer this to look something like this, or maybe like this. This is a little bit of momentum, it's only one five in the bar. When it falls again, you go short. I like to get short as, as quick as possible here at 39 with my stop just above the high, not even a 10 pip stop. And you always want to draw your fibs on the last wave to get an idea. Most of the time the market's going to stall between the first and second fib target. Comes down here, and you can see it's losing its momentum, so I would have been out of this somewhere around 07. But short at around, let's just say 37, that's a 30 pip win. You might have made four or five pips on the first one, uh, and the currency meter helped you uh, take that trade. The pound was also very uh, strong last night, and you could trade the pound versus the CAD. Let's bring up a regular chart. I'm going to show you how uh, the new uh, pivot daily, weekly, and monthly uh, can be added to your chart, and it shows you the historical levels in real time as well. Strong pound, weak CAD. Go to add script here. I have a lot of scripts that I test and run. Uh, here's the daily trend, the weekly trend and the monthly trend. And as you can see on the chart, uh, it does fill in the back history based on what it was at that time. 
So this is one heck of a strong currency. The daily, weekly, monthly trend are very strong. You know that looking at the currency meter as well. When this breaks out uh, above this little multi-hour sideways rectangle pattern, you get in. And you also are looking to buy pullbacks. You know, we don't have any uh, range bar charts up, but more than likely you would have got in somewhere around here. Or you could have waited for the breakout of this. You draw your fibs on this this wave here. And again, the fib target's a great place to get in. And this traded 59.45 out at 78 for 30 plus pip win. So later in the day, you have this nice uh, move up here. You might have looked to get into this little pullback right here, which unfortunately didn't work. But it did go up 10, 15 pips, so you should have maybe broke even on that trade. Uh, you might have bought this breakout right here with a loss, and then you got into this trade right here with maybe a 15, 20 pip win. And of course, the last uh, move up. You always want to draw your fibs on that wave to get an idea again of where to take your profits. And notice the fib target. You're in this trade right here uh, at 64, and you're out at 92. So it's about a 35 pip win. So if you have a, a loss or two of 5 to 10 or 12 pips and you make a 30 pip win and a 30 pip win, you got 60 pips minus, even if you have three 10 pip losses, 30 pips of losses, you netted 30 pips on that currency. And that's the key to trading, small losses, bigger wins. And you can also see last night the New Zealand was very strong. Uh, you could trade that against the weaker dollar, which you can see the daily trends down, the weekly trends down. Let's take a look at uh, New Zealand dollar buys. This currency is above the hourly right here. Uh, starting the day off, uh, you have this little pullback from the previous day's high. You always want to draw your fibs on the last wave, and you can see it eventually hit that uh, 1.618, or I'm sorry, 1.382 fib target right here. If you had bought this at uh, 91, you can see it's a few pips away from there. It's also above our upper containment band. Um, probably would have got out of this somewhere as it starts coming back down. These are my Fibonacci profit target analysis that I do each night. So there's major resistance here. You might avoid this currency mainly because there is such high resistance there and because it starts the day off not at or near the hourly moving average, but near the upper bands. And most of the time it runs out of steam up near these upper bands and it reverses. So uh, always be aware of where the currency is in relation to our uh, Fibonacci analysis levels and the upper containment bands. Later in the day, you can see uh, the Australian became really weak here. The Swiss was strong all day. You might have traded the Australian short against the Swiss. You're looking for Australian Swiss cells. And as you bring up this currency chart, notice you know extreme weakness on all the time frames. This currency is kind of going sideways, but what this is telling you is, is this currency is poised to go down. You wait for it to kind of break the lows here, and it doesn't happen until a little bit after 8, and you can see it pulls back uh, about 40 pips there. If you were trading this currency and you got short right here, your stop would be above the swing high. When it goes down and kind of comes up, you're moving it down immediately, uh, pretty much near break even, and as it falls Later, you're drawing your fibs off of this, and most of the time it's going to stall at the first or second fib target. So when it broke through the first fib target and came real close to the second one and went sideways here, I would have just got out somewhere around here in the middle of this area here, around 56. We're short up here at 79 uh, for a little over 20 pip profit, again, while risking 10 pips or so.